Today we're having a look at advanced processes or techniques in Archicad and right now we're going to have a look at layers and layer con combinations to understand how they work and what they are. Now I've opened up a commercial project now in Archicad education version to be able to explain this to you for the video. Now this is a, a complex building, a complex project and it's got a lot of different layers, elevations, if you understand Archicad that you know what we're doing is we're building models, three-dimensional models, and then we're adding some two-dimensional information also in conjunction with those 3D elements to create views. And so we have floor plans, we have elevations, we have sections and details, and then we add more layer, more layers, more information, more detail, more intelligence to these by changing the scale and turning layers on and turning layers off. And so for any one project, if I was to turn on all of these layers, to find layers, we either go Options, Element, Attributes, Layers, we right click maybe, if we've got a layer selected and we can turn it on or off, Layers, or my preferred method is Command L or Control L if you're using a PC and that will take you into layers and layer combinations. Now, as the name suggests, a layer combination is a combination of layers. So if I click on a different combination, RCP, therefore meaning reflected ceiling plan, it's going to turn off all the layers that I don't want to see and turn on the layers that I do. Let's just, right for now, turn on all the layers. So for this floor plan, let's just delete this, this is what my drawing looks like if I had on every single layer. Now, this doesn't look like a pretty drawing, does it? It's too messy. But every single piece of this information is important for a particular drawing. Now, I don't want to have to turn on and off each of these layers every time I want to switch between drawings. Therefore, I create a saved view. And that saved view keeps the intelligence of the layer combination as well as other information. What does that mean? Let's have a look. So this is the upper ground floor plan. I'm just going to go into those settings. So I'm going to select my view. I'm going to right click and say view settings. Now in the view settings it's going to tell me what does this view have as saved. It's got a layer combination, has scale, structural display, pen sets, model view options, renovation filters. It's got all these things that make it what it is. Let's just look at layer combinations for one of those. When I double click on my save view it will automatically zoom, it will automatically change scale, and it will automatically change all of the attributes including layers and layer combinations on my drawing. So you see that now this is a lot cleaner. It's showing what I want to see. It's not overly burdened with other unnecessary information, but it's still a very, very complex drawing. Now what does that mean in terms of layers and layer combinations? Again, Command L. We see here that I'm currently working on a layer combination called floor plan documentation. And we see that when we scroll down, all of the ceiling layers are turned off. I have a layer called floor overlay and that's turned on. I have a layer called furniture and that's turned off. I have landscaping layers and mostly they're turned off. I have a whole lot of layers called dims. <coughs> which means dimensions, RMD dims ceiling, RMD dims floor, RMD dims general, RMD dims site, which means for a floor plan or a reflected ceiling plan or in general or for a site plan, I can turn on or off the extra layers of dimensions that I have. So with one click of a button, let's now switch from a upper ground floor plan to an upper ground reflected ceiling plan and we see that it's the same modeled information but it's a different lot of layers, a different lot of information and that's the value of layers. If you're wondering is it worth getting layers right, a lot of my students don't ever think that layers are worth doing, I assure you they are and the more that you work and the bigger and more complex the projects become, the more essential good layer combinations are, the more useful they are. Now for any one plan, in this case I have a layer combination for a floor plan. I have a layer combination for a reflected ceiling plan. I have a layer combination for a electrical plan, for a lighting plan, for a slab setout, for a landscape plan, 
for a joinery and finishes. I haven't spelt that correct. <laughs> drawing. I also have detailed drawings for kitchen, bathroom, toilets, and you'll note that not only are the layers different, but the scale is now different. I'm now working at a scale of 1 to 50 because text will resize based on the scale that you're working to. And all of those are of the same drawing. They're all of the same model. I've just changed the information that's being viewed. That's what layers and layer combinations are about. Let's go and have a look at how to change some of those now. So if I go into Command L, I can add a new layer. So let's say I want to add another layer called Dim's Detail. I'm going to create a new layer. There's two buttons that say new. Everything that's over here relates to layers. Everything that's here relates to layer combinations. And let's have a look at what I mean by that. I'm going to create a new layer here and call RMD. I'm going to use caps because I'm a little bit pedantic. RMD Dim's Detail. Now when I create that, it'll generally have its eye turned on. But when I change my layer combination, it's generally going to turn that layer off automatically. What I need to do is determine what is the layer combination that I want to see this in and what other layers do I want to see. I may have an existing layer combination that I want to update. If I do, I'm going to select this layer called sorry, this layer combination called details and I'm going to turn that layer on, which is clicking the eye. Once I click the eye, I have not updated the layer combination until I press update. Please, please, please remember to press update, otherwise you're wasting all your time. And if I press cancel, everything I've done in this window is wasted, I need to press OK. Don't press escape. I get in a real big habit of pressing escape because it's a good way to get out of commands. There's also a good way of losing information. So be very careful with what you press, particularly when you're working in the elements such as surfaces and layers because you need to save it before you escape. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that look like? I'm going to change my scale down to 1 to 50. I'm going to turn on the right layer combination, details, and that's what I'm looking at. So that means I could now, if I wanted to, dimension, let's say the setup for the toilet. So I'm going to choose the inside of my wall. I'm going to choose the middle of my toilet and the inside of the wall. And I'm going to draw a dimension line. Now that's telling me that my toilet isn't perfectly centered in my room. I really would like my toilet to be centered in my room. If I then move my toilet, that's the wrong way, isn't it? Right click, move, drag. I'm going to move it to the left. Uh, I need to turn on my tracker. My dimensions will automatically update if they're active, if they've been done well. What does that mean? Let me show you. If I use my dimension tool and I click and it's a round circle, and I click it's a round circle, then that means these are going to be active dimensions. I don't really need to note the end, end, of, my to end of my toilet. The toilet, that dimension is going to automatically change. If I dimension and my dimension isn't active, let's say it's square, that means it's not really relating to anything. And if I move my toilet, for instance, nothing's going to change because it's not related to anything in particular. So it's very important that we use active dimensions, not Static dimensions, I'm pretty sure that's the correct terminology in Archicad. And I don't want to have that dimension there on my floor plan. So if I now go click on my normal floor plan, because that was on a layer that's now turned off, you'll see that that dimension's not there. Because if I turn that on, let's see what it would look like. <laughs> I hope I didn't do that on the right layer. Let's go back to that, please. Kitchen. See what layer I've got it on. I've got it on the wrong layer. I need to draw it on Dim's Detail. Let's go back to that. Now it's not there when I'm on floor plan, and it appears automatically when I'm in the right view. So therefore using 
save views which have their own layer combinations are very very important now we can also make our own layer combinations what might that be I've made pretty much everyone that I can think of uh, but let's say I want to make a let's see I don't have one yeah a furniture plan new furniture now to make this furniture plan, I could have used any of my drawings to begin with, and ideally, sorry, any of my layer combinations that are existing to begin with, and ideally I'd use one that's closest linked to the one that I want to create. What I need to now do is have a look at what is visible and what is invisible with my drawing. Of course, I want to see it at a probably a scale of 1 to 100 in this case, and I've got all these extra bits of detail which I don't want. Now you could just select a piece and find out that this is called RMD Floor Overlay and I could turn that off. I could go right click, Layers, Hide Layer, but that would be a bad way of working because what I want to do is turn it off permanently on my layer combination, not temporarily. So what I therefore need to do is find out what it's called, RMD Floor Overlay, go into my layers, make sure I'm in my right layer combination, turn off that layer, press Update, press OK and now it will permanently be turned off. Now this is a slow methodical process if you've got crazy layers and you start with the wrong one to begin with. But what you need to do is go through and understand what each layer is and turn off as many as you don't need to have. So in this case I can I can pretty much know a lot of what mine are. I don't want to see door window numbers, I don't want to see demolition, I don't want to see any of my dimensions, I don't want to see any of my detail overlay, I don't want to see any of my electrical, I don't want to see any of my lighting, so choosing good names is, is important, I don't probably want to see landscaping, maybe I do, and then I always remember I have to press update at the end of the day, otherwise I'll be turning off information only temporarily and not making a permanent change, and so that's layers and layer combinations.